Steeped in exploration and maritime and cultural history going back hundreds of years, love, love, come at Barbican, UK. Feel the spirit of adventure. And then you've got a new um, shop, a new sort of shop here that deals in uh, jet skis. We've got jet skis across there. I'm not sure how much they charge to go on there, but that's only open this year. And then you've got Bertie's ice cream and Gertie's uh, food, P uh, Penang food, I think, is that what they call it? Um, which is finest in food. Uh, but his ice creams are fantastic, so it's well worth going for that, uh, to check those out. So that's Bertie's bacon rolls for £3, his coffee is £1.50, fresh donuts uh, for, for £3. I have a lot of respect for people that work very hard and Bertie works incredibly hard. And he's come up from nothing because he had a small ice cream van on the hoe five years ago and now he's got uh, his own restaurant. And for many years that building was lying empty, which is the Pier Masters. And uh, Charlie, who also used to have an ice cream parlour on the hoe, is now a manager of uh, a few restaurants on the, on, the, on the waterfront, and that's one of them. So the Barbican's full of artists and creative people and explorers that have sailed out from here across the water. Recorded the Transit Bakerley boat race from here, which is the uh, boat race from Plymouth to New York. And um, then they have the Fastnet boat race from here for many years as well. And uh, there's an awful lot of discovery that's gone out, that's gone out from Plymouth over the years. And there's plenty more to be had. Uh, last weekend they had the, uh, the Sailboat Grand Prix which is an international event as well. They had five teams in from all over the world, Australia, Japan, um, and other areas of the world. So that's the quick intro, and I'll do a better job next time. I'm going into New Street now. This is Stokes Lane. This is one of the oldest areas in Plymouth with the cobblestones. New Street Gallery. <coughs> and that's the Elizabethan Gardens when they're open, but it's been locked down through the Covid crisis. So it's been closed for about 18 months. Then this is like a privately, a private little bar and restaurant, I think. Kapukadaya. And then this is a beautiful little uh, eatery, which is the Merchant's Coffee House, the American um, Barbican Botanical Gin Room. Look at this, beautiful. It's Barbican House and the Tudor Rose tea rooms, really nice. DBX Productions, and then Chris Robinson's shop, which is now closed and he's working online, uh, selling historical books on Plymouth that he's produced over the years and DVDs. That's the tattoo parlour and the, uh, the Palace Vaults tattoos. It's been open for years, which is uh, dust, and, dust and bones. Then turning in to the left here, we're going into the White Lane Gallery where you have Glyn White when his studio's open. You've got Sue Wills on the left. All traditional uh, local scenes uh, in different styles of painting. And flying the flag for the UK. Then 
the Navy in. <clears throat> And then you've got the dolphin here, which uh, certain times of the year you get uh, Morris dancers outside here. And you can see my, DV, DV, my videos on, on YouTube as well of the Morris dancers all times of the year. That used to be the Edinburgh Woolen Mill, but it closed down. It used to be a fish market before this was put up. Uh, so it'd be nice to see that turned into um, fresh food traditional market again. Actually it's an ideal building for that. Kind of Lanka, platters, nice fish and chips all along here. Pilgrims for ice cream. And just going up here, you go into the parade, for, um, antiques and collectors market, which has been open as long as I've been in Plymouth. I've been in Plymouth since 1991. So you've got three floors of uh, mixed collectibles in that shop there. Everything from about Legolas robots, stamps, coins, you know, it's all here. Uh, Just nice to come and visit. We're starting a massage centre. Train the thigh massage way. And this is like going into a museum in here. Kayak, I wouldn't mind that myself. So that's the parade antiques. And collectibles. I'm not going in there today because they don't know whether they want me to go in. <clears throat> so now we're heading towards the uh, famous Mayflower Steps where the Pilgrim Father sailed up 400 years ago to discover the world. Um, Lots of controversy about it because politics changed and everything in those days was very tribal. Uh, so it's good things and bad things came from it. This used to be Russell's camera shop, which was so perfect images, and now it's the magpie nest, which uh, deals in handcrafted silver jewellery, bespoke designs, commission services, finest quality natural gemstones, gem selection services, trinkets, treasures, and five collectibles. And um, they haven't been there that long because um, Russell, who used to run the camera shop there, has now moved to Abington Street in Plymouth. So let's go down to the quay again and have a quick look. <clears throat> so you've got Captain Jasper to the left and all these beautiful boats in the harbour here. There's a lot of money around but you don't see it being spent in the city. So I think a lot of people go to Tavistock, Exeter, and probably Bristol as well. Look at that. Looking back in history. London South Western receiving office for goods and parcels in all parts. Greek suite. And an old tram carriage turned into a E3 here. And that's uh, Plymouth Tourist Information Office. And these, this is the, uh, the Mayflower Steps. The original Mayflower Steps isn't uh, around anymore because it's, at the, it's in the basement and underground in the Admiral Bride. So you can't get to it because it's not been dug up again. So this is the, uh, the, the memorial uh, to it where you can get boats and sail out from Plymouth. So you get the yellow boat from that Batten, uh, which is, um, serves every 30 minutes and it takes about 10 minutes to get across the water. 
Then you get ferries to Corsand, the Royal William Yard, you can go Tamar Cruising, you go to Calstock, and that costs between 19 and 20 pounds, depending on what time of the day you go. And then sand cruising, fishing trips, and the eatery at the boathouse, which is just down here. So I think to go across on the uh, on the ferry, which takes takes ten minutes, costs about two pounds each way. But it's a nice little run anyway, and then you're at that button where Lawrence of Arabia had his last posting in the in the uh, Air Force, um, and they used to have flying boats going out from there during the uh, Second World War and after the Second World War. So the, from the sound must have been very noisy, and I would have thought all the sound would have carried across. Um, um, the uh, the area up as far as Jenny Cliff over the back there uh, because it's like a basin all the sound uh, gets thrown out from here but like I said I've been recording people since 1991-92 and I like people that are different that are challenging as long as they're not hurting people that change the ways of thinking um, because everybody else a lot of people are just uh, conformists that just live day to day and don't really have a life so I like eccentric people <laughs> Uh, ironically, and um, as long as they're not hurting anybody, then it uh, sets ways of thinking. But they're also the people who get heavily criticised uh, because, um, well, even Jesus got criticised because of who he was and his thought processes, and look what happened to him. So, um, uh, Plymouth is full of people like that, and that's what I like. But I'm not into the gothic dark side of things, and uh, Plymouth has a lot of that as well. I like to look at the bright. Um, exploratory side of things. I like uh, Henry Falcon Scott, I like uh, Arabia who's based at the Breakwater at the back there. This is all being rebuilt after the uh, storms last winter on Plymouth Hope. And um, the thought that the fine boats flew up from here in after the Second World War. Uh, so um, I like the spirit of adventure. And then you had Shackleton, Ernie Shackleton, then Charles Darwin sailed out from Plymouth to discover the origins of the species as well. Um, but I don't think they're promoted well enough, uh, anywhere near well enough, to, uh, to uh, create um, a positive attitude to the city. It's good news today, though, that uh, Tom Daly, the diver from Plymouth, has won gold in the Tokyo Olympics, so well done to him. <laughs> 